Hi, it's Miss Lawrence. I am here saying hello from my porch in Holyoke. Um, like all of us, we have been stuck inside here, uh, my daughters and I, for about six weeks. I've been out a couple times to the store, um, but other than that, we've just been living at home, working from home. Both my daughters are doing school from home. Um, one's in high school, one's in college. Um, we don't have a very big apartment, so we've all been spending a lot of time together um, in a very small space. But today is nice, so I decided to come out onto the porch to video my very first YouTube video um, on projects that you can do from home that uh, just involve just some things you have around your house. I've been experimenting a little bit, and I'm going to be making these um, videos to share with you. So. Yeah, here I am. I'm on my porch. I will show you my neighborhood. Sunny, the birds are singing. Finally, trees are blossoming with leaves. It's really nice. Um, so here I am chatting, holding my phone, talking. Um, I've been FaceTiming a lot of my friends. I'm sure you guys have been FaceTiming and video chatting um, with your friends and family too. Um, so you know, being apart and we, just, um, we have this urge to be connected. Um, so video is a really great way to do it. So we can do it real time and we can record things and send it. Um, but today's art project is about a different kind of communication, kind of a little more old fashioned, which is using the mail. So there is something called mail art, which is pretty broad and I don't really want to go into the full history of mail art. Um, I am going to look for some videos and I will link them below if anyone's interested in learning more about mail art. But basically mail art is, comes from um, kind of like the idea of art where you're using ordinary everyday objects to be creative. So normally a letter is just uh, you know an envelope with an address, a stamp that goes to the mail. It, um, So when someone goes out to their mailbox, opens it up, there is a surprise in there. Um, the other reason that I wanted to do mail art is because I don't know if any of you are checking the mail a lot lately, but I am um, just because I'm a little, not really bored at home, but um, the days are long sitting in the same space. So when I do hear the mailman come up onto my porch, I go right out and check the mail. Uh, so anyhow, um, Yeah, here I am recording on my porch. I'm not quite sure what else to say right now, other than I did record some um, images and videos of myself making a piece of very, very simple mail art. So for this project, all you need is an envelope, something to write with, and a stamp. And if you don't have one or any of these things in the Google document in Google Classroom, is my email address. Please email me and I will um, do what I can to get you what you need some mail art if you choose to do this. Um, if you send your mail out to someone, please, if you could take a picture of it first and send it to me so that I can um, see it and then look at what you would like to put it into our school's art gallery. I'm trying to keep it on my phone. So I'm going to here with this building and there's cars coming through my street. So Here's a piece of mail art I mailed a few weeks ago to a friend in California. I've removed their address for their privacy, but it will be on the top block, their name, the middle of their street, and the bottom is their city, state, and zip code. For this, I just used a blue pen, fine point pen, and some colored pencils. This is the back of the same envelope. On this art project, I decided to put my return address on the back rather than in the upper left-hand corner of the front of the envelope.
Speaking of envelopes, the envelope is your canvas for this type of art project. They come in different sizes, and for today's project, I am going to use a basic letter size envelope. Your mail art envelope is not going to go anywhere unless you have a postage stamp on it, which you can get from the post office. They come in these, they call them books. This one has frogs made of little um, paintings of frogs that an artist made. And these can be folded into books you just by peeling off these little extra pieces of sticky stuff. Um, right here, I did peel off a stamp by accident. So I decided that that frog would be the stamp for my letter that I'm going to be making today. You always put the stamp in the upper right hand corner of your envelope. So here I'm finishing peeling off those little sticky things so I can fold my book of stamps into a little rectangle where I can keep in my wallet or on my desk for when I need them. I found these stamps uh, based on the book The Snowy Day, which you may have read when you were younger. This um, book of stamps is based on illustrations from that book. Um, comes in a set of 20, so it looks like they have four different illustrations from the book. Here's some more frogs because I love them. Um, this is based on murals that are painted on the walls in some of the larger cities' post offices in the United States. So this is kind of like a collector's sheet. Uh, these are honoring STEM education. I bought these to go on my daughter's graduation party envelopes because that's what she's studying. Here's some flowers. This is um, commemoration of the music artist Marvin Gaye. So an artist was commissioned to make a painting. I think this is the photograph they probably used as inspiration um, to create the Marvin Gaye stamps. And then these I have, I bought just because I liked the color. These are honoring Woodstock, the music festival from the 60s. I just like the bird and the rainbow colors. Um, that's a newer one I have. And this is my absolute favorite. These are um, commemorating the Lunar New Year, um, Year of the Rat in the Chinese culture. And these are just really um, a beautiful stamp. Uh, there's metallic, shiny. I only used one of them so far because I love them so much. Now that you have your stamp in the upper right hand corner of your envelope, it's now um, time to add an area for your important information so the post office can get your letter to the person that you want to send it to. So you are going to make sure that you have a very clear area in the center of your envelope. I use a pencil and just very lightly draw in a rectangle and that is for the name and address of the person that you are sending the letter to. You wanna make sure you get their name, their street address with the number, the city, the state, and the zip code all correct so that um, the post office knows how to get it to the right person. They use scanners and scanners um, electronically scan and sort the mail. So you wanna be as clear as possible. And then you wanna add a return address that will be on either the back or the front if it's on the front, it goes in the upper left-hand corner. So I'm going to draw a little rectangle there. So now I have my stamp, I have my area for my address, and the return address. So now we can fill the space with our artwork. You can use markers, paints, collage, stamp. You just want to make sure that it's, if you're attaching something, it's stuck well. Today, I'm just going to use a regular pen, regular pencil, and I'm going to do a really, really quick um, sketch to turn it into um, mail art. Here are some examples of mail art that I found on the internet. Just to give you some ideas of the ways that people are creative with how they place their address on their envelope. Here's the envelope I showed you earlier. My friend's address is on the front and then on the back I decided to put my return address. This next envelope I made out of a piece of magazine, a page from a magazine, and there is that Year of the Rat stamp. Honestly, I was pretty nervous about drawing on camera, but I remember I always tell you guys there are no mistakes, so I just decided to relax and do a little doodle of myself with a ballpoint pen, adding some pencil to add some gray shading and some cross hatching with my pen. Of course, it's not as nice as the stamp that's up there in the corner. Um, that stamp was painted by an artist, most stamps are actually created 
by artists, uh, whether it be painting, photography, printmaking. Um, it's a really kind of a cool job you could have as an artist. Um, on the back of my letter, I added another message, uh, just some block letters, I miss you, with a little drop shadow, again, with my gray pencil, and I'm done. There you go, my very first YouTube video. It's actually not a YouTube video yet. I have to figure out how to upload it to YouTube, but hopefully I can figure that out, and this will be online for you guys to see very soon. Remember, if you need anything um, to help you make nail art, if you need an envelope, if you need a stamp, um, please just give me an email or send me a text message. I'll put all my information in Google Classroom. You can use that. So I'd love to see what you end up making with the idea of nail art. Remember, send me a picture and I can include it in our online virtual art gallery so we can have an art show this spring. You know, whether there's a pandemic going on or not, we're still going to have an art show. All right, I hope everyone is healthy and safe and wearing your mask and washing your hands. And we will be in touch. Look out for some more of my awkward videos. Bye.